love you. Why? High five. Ew. <laughs> Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a little sit down chit chat with you guys all about birth control. So I recently got an arm implant and I posted about it on Instagram and a lot of you guys were wondering what my experience was like about it and when I offered to do a video, a lot of you guys wanted me to so this is that video. So basically I have been on the pill, I've had an IUD and I now have the arm implant. So this video is going to be all about kind of my experience pros and cons in case you are considering getting any of these or just want to learn more about it um, I do want to make a disclaimer so this is going to be talking about medical procedures and different um, obviously medication and all that stuff so I really really do advise you if you have any questions to ask your healthcare provider or doctor um, this video is just to share my experience um, just to kind of in case you guys are curious but I obviously am not a doctor so I really really want you guys to take care of yourself so please ask for professional advice if you are considering doing any of these things or taking any of these things um, and obviously your health is the most important so please take care of yourself and this video is just to share my experience and just to talk about it because I feel like as women this is something that we all have to deal with at one point or another the decision of whether or not we should and the decision of what method we want to do so I feel like talking about it definitely helps in making those decisions and figuring out what works best for you so let's go ahead and just get started with the video all right so first off I want to kind of do a quick overview so I have been taking birth control since I was 12 so since seventh grade I am 22 now so over 10 years I've been on birth control so the first form of birth control that I used was the pill and I used that from the ages of 12 to 18 so um, the pill I feel like is one of the most popular if not the most popular form of um, birth control and it is really convenient and I feel like it's a really traditional method and the reason why I took it was because when I was starting my period I would have my period for literally four weeks straight five weeks straight have a couple days off not even a week and then the cycle would continue so i was constantly on my period and not just like little periods like heavy heavy bleeding and it became um it came to the point where i was actually anemic and it was a health hazard a health issue that was caused by these really long periods so I went to the doctor to try to figure out what was wrong with me and how I could deal with it and basically they said that we should definitely try to get you on the pill to try to regulate your period. So as a 7th grader that was kind of like, why? Like I'm not having sex, why should I go on the pill? Obviously it's really good if you are sexually active to be on these things but there are other purposes um for birth control and in that in my case it was it was to regulate my period because it was a health concern of how much blood i was losing so i want to go ahead and talk about the pros and cons of being on the pill i have my little notes here whoa <laughs> my notes here so in case if you see me glancing down that's what i'm doing so the pros of taking the pill were the pill actually got rid of my period, which was life-changing. I'm so glad that I did get on the pill because it was becoming to the point where it was constantly like, I was always worried about leaking, I was always worried in class, like we had tests we would take, if they were more than an hour long, I would bleed through my pants. Like, it was inevitable and it was just horrible and embarrassing and it was, so stressful so to be able to go on the pill and fix that was really really nice so if you actually look at a birth control packet the last week is sugar pills the placebo pills so basically if you skip those and take the actual birth control pill during that week instead of taking the sugar pills you actually can get rid of your period um, for me I did that and it worked 
Uh, so I ended up not really having a period throughout high school, which was so, so nice. Um, I know that may not be the case for everyone, but for me, I've always had a really, re really weird period. And since then, I have not had a regular period in my life. My most regular period was having the five weeks of bleeding a week off. And then since I've been on the pill and on birth control um, for the past 10 years, I have never had a regular period. So it may differ from person to person, but in my own, in my own experience, it got rid of my period, which is really nice. And I know that for a lot of people, birth control actually, actually helps with acne. And I know that certain birth controls are better at that than others. And because I was on a birth control for regulating my period, I wasn't worried about um, having it help my skin. So it didn't worsen my skin, but it didn't make it better. So I would say a pro was that it didn't make my skin worse and I didn't have like mood swings or weight gain related to the pill. So that was a pro for me. Uh, obviously person to person differs, but that's my own experience. So now I'm going to talk about the cons of being on the pill. So the number one thing for me was effectiveness. So the pill is 99% effective if you take it perfectly. That means you take it every day at the same exact time. You never ever miss the pill. And I just have to say, I am horrible at taking medicine. I am horrible at remembering to do things in general. So especially as a middle schooler, um, taking the pill every day at the same time, I just wasn't doing it. I was missing days. I was taking two or three pills at a time to make up for the days I didn't take it. And just overall, I don't even want to know how ineffective the pill was for me because I did that. But I wasn't taking it for contraceptive. I wasn't sexually active. So I didn't risk it because I was doing it for my periods. I probably messed up my period a little bit, but I wasn't taking it to not have a baby. But for people that are having sex and are on the pill, the effectiveness is a little scary because unless you're taking it perfectly, um, that effectiveness goes down each time you miss the pill or even not take it on the same at the, around the same time you take it every day. So I actually looked up statistics on Plant Parenthood just to kind of give you guys some facts behind everything I'm saying. And they say that on average, the, the pill is actually 90% effective. So one out of 10 people on the pill get pregnant while being on the pill because of that reason, because of how missing a single dose can affect and lower how um, effective the pill is. So I actually didn't know this, and I read this online on Parenthood. So if you actually vomit or have diarrhea, it lowers the effectiveness because it's a pill you're putting in your system. So if you're doing something to um, get rid of it, like throwing it up, then the effectiveness is lowered. So that's a little scary if you are using that as your main contraceptive because you want this to be as effective as possible. If that means like you puking might affect it, like that is personally to me really scary. So obviously effectiveness is a huge thing. That's something that you want the best of when you're considering a birth control. And I just don't think the pill was for me. Also another con is that it's a daily thing. You have to take the pill every single day of your life. You have to constantly remember, put alarms on your phone and um, you know, make sure you take it every single day. It's not something you can just take once and forget about it. Like it's a daily thing. All right, moving on to the IUD implant. So, um, I got the IUD when I was 18, so I was about to graduate high school, and um, the reason I got it was actually because my mom worked at a clinic, and she saw so many girls come in, and they were pregnant, and she said that birth control pills were just like not that reliable, so she knew that I would be moving out soon and just wanted to make sure that I was protected. So she had known the IUD was really, really effective, and if you don't know what an IUD is, it's an inner uterine device. So basically it's a plastic T-shaped device that is inserted into your uterus. And it basically releases a hormone called 
progestin, I believe it's called, um, which prevents pregnancy. And it's actually an over 99% effective. So yeah, that happened. And so there are actually different types of IUDs. The one that I had was the Skyla IUD and it was a hormonal IUD that lasted three years and is recommended for women that have not had kids because it is a smaller size. There are other IUDs that last longer, that can last up to 12 years. And there is one that is copper, so it's not hormonal. I didn't have that, so I can't really talk about that, but those are the different um, types of IUDs if you are interested. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and start talking about the pros of the IUD. One of the main pros of the IUD was that it was something that I had to get once and I would never have to think about it again for three years. And that was really, really nice coming from having to worry about taking the pill every day. So I just had to get it once and I was good for three years. Another great thing was that it actually stopped my period completely. That was something that I was a little worried about transitioning just because birth control had worked for me for so long as far as stopping my period. So the idea of mixing up my hormones and trying something different and maybe having heavy periods again was something I worried about. But it's really, really common that the IUD um, will lighten your period. And I think one out of three women actually have their periods completely stop after um, having the IUD for a couple months. And another pro is that it is over 99% effective, less than 1% of women with an IUD get pregnant. Um, so that is really, really important if you're using it for a contraceptive, obviously. And for me personally, with the insurance that I had, I actually got it for free, which was really nice. I know some of my girlfriends um, also got arm implants and IUDs for free. Um, so be sure to see if that is an option for you because, I mean, if it's free and you can get it done, you really should. Um, yeah. So cons. The number one con and the reason why I did not get an IUD again was the insertion process. So basically when you get an IUD, first off, they have to do a pelvic exam, which pelvic exams, I mean, for as women like we have to do this it's a thing that you need to do for your for your health our pelvic exams are kind of annoying but whatever but yeah they do a pelvic exam and that wasn't bad it's a little uncomfortable but it wasn't bad but the actual insertion was probably one of the if not the most painful thing i've ever experienced and i would have to say i have a pretty high pain tolerance um, I don't know, it's kind of a different pain, but like, all my tattoos, I got like a six tattoo session. I sat there, laughed, talked the entire time, didn't bother me. This was very painful, and basically what they do is they have your legs open on the little, you know, things like that, and they open up with a little, like, metal device, and they're literally looking at your uterus, because they also have to make sure that anatomically you are okay with this insertion because some sometimes if your um, uterus is too small it can actually not really work that well with the IUD it's really rare but just to be sure the doctor will do these things to make sure that it's the right fit for you but anyways they literally put the plastic device into your uterus so when you have cramps when you're on your period it's from like uterus contractions so when you have this device that's this big, literally going in to your uterus, you feel like a cramp, because that's what a cramps are, contractions. But it's like the worst cramp ever, because in a single moment you just feel your uterus open. And it'll last after a while, and it would come in waves like it was throbbing. And it just was the most uncomfortable feeling ever, and I am so glad that I had um, my boyfriend at the time driving for me because I really didn't know how bad it would be. They also recommend that you take some Tylenol or ibuprofen or something beforehand to help with the pain. I didn't do that though because I didn't know. But I, in the car, I, I was just crying. I was so uncomfortable. And I know that for different people, you know, it's different. But like, I have to say, it was one of the worst pains ever. It was just horrible. 
And like the worst of it was when it was actually like, being inserted and then like after that, like the next 20 minutes. But for the next, I would say it lasted for about two hours, just coming in waves of like finally feeling like maybe I'd be okay. And then it would just come back with this really intense feeling of a bad internal cramp. So that really sucked. And that's kind of the ultimate reason why I didn't get the IUD again. Um, another con is that this is a more personal thing. So I was like super paranoid that I would like lose my IUD in me. It's a little like, it didn't make any sense. Like that just doesn't happen. But because I couldn't feel it after it was inserted, like the pain, like I was mentioning, it goes away after like a day. Um, but you don't feel it in you and you can't, obviously you can't see it. So I had this like kind of like illogical paranoia that it was going to fall out or it was going to like go deeper inside and just be lost. But there is a string connected to it. So if you really wanted to, like you could go in and have a check to see if it's still there. Or like in some cases people can check themselves. I never did that. But um, that didn't happen. But that was just like a personal thing because I couldn't see it. It kind of freaked me out that like it wasn't there. Um, but yeah, those are basically all the cons for the IUD. Yeah, and it was a little awkward getting it taken out because I actually had a guy doctor and I wasn't planning on getting it out that day and he was like, okay, well, since we're doing your, because I took it out the same time I got this in or like a day apart and he was like, since I'm going to be inserting this thing, like I have to take out your ID. I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to have all that pain all over again and I was so scared and it was a guy doctor, which like I personally prefer female doctors just because like my vagina's out and it was really weird little story time um so like as i had my legs open he literally said this he was like wow are you a dancer as like my whole coochie is out and exposed and i was like um i mean no like i used to dance like years ago but not like for a long time and he was like oh like were you a ballerina still as i was like just chilling there with you know the whole pelvic thing and like him about to take out my IUD and I was like no I wasn't he was like oh you're so flexible oh uh, and I was just like please get this over with all right so I'm gonna jump on this idea real quick I just told you guys my experience kind of with the doctor who had um taken out my IUD and I kind of say the story looking back, I was just watching it and I'm kind of laughing about it. But honestly, I think it was a really inappropriate situation. I feel like the doctor should have um, been more professional and made me feel very uncomfortable. And to this day, I, you know, still feel really um, uncomfortable about it. And I don't think that you should ever feel that way when you are in the hands of a healthcare professional. They are there to make sure that you are healthy, you are safe, and um, I... You know, the more people I kind of talk to about the situation, they're like, Vivian, that that was weird. Um, and I'm going to be honest, I didn't report him. It's been quite a while now, and it's kind of hard for me to wrap my head around, you know, what would happen if I did that. You know, thinking about his family, maybe his intentions were not that way. I, you know, was just overthinking it. And I guess I just want to admit that and be open about that because I feel like that's honestly how a lot of times – like girls think and that's a lot of times why people get away with stuff like that but I mean I just wanted to speak my truth about that and not kind of just leave it as it was because that's not how I really feel about it but anyways moving on to the rest of the video the process of taking it out wasn't nearly as bad as putting it in though like it was like that pain I had felt like in waves that lasted for over an hour but only in the moment it came out like once it came out it was done so maybe the pain lasted for 10 seconds at the most and then I never felt that pain again so thankfully because I was so worried about that so since I had to get my IUD taken out I decided to get the arm implant so I'm gonna go ahead and talk about that now and it is the next plan on is what it's like formal name is so if you don't know what next plan on or the arm implant is is it's a rod that they put in your arm and it's like a rod that's about an inch and a half um, long almost looks like a little matchstick the shape of it and um, 
It is also over 99% effective and it lasts three years as well. So it's basically what I thought would be the IUD without the insertion. But I had a little bit different of an experience um, so far. I've been on this arm implant for almost three months now, so I got it back in January and now it's March. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about the pros and cons of the arm implant. So the pro for this was coming from an IUD, I really was elated when the insertion of this was so painless. I was a little worried because it is something where they have to still take you into a procedure room um, and I had my arm out like this and they basically, they gave me a shot to numb my arm, which the shot wasn't bad at all and then from that moment forward, I couldn't feel anything. So if he poked me with like a like a wood dowel even, I wouldn't really feel like a sharp pain. It would just be a little pressure like someone was tapping me. And so I didn't look at what was happening because I am like kind of weird about that. Like I'd rather just not see what's happening. If I can't feel it and I can't see it, then it's like it's not happening is how my mind works. So anyways, the actual procedure itself was uh, they numbed it and then they took a um, little marker and kind of marked where they were going to put it and then they used the needle which had the rod uh, device and they inserted it and you can actually kind of see that is where it is that's my little scar from the insertion and if you run your fingers along it you can kind of see that line you can feel the device in your arm. Painless insertion huge pro um, also, I get it once and I can just forget about it for three years once again. Um, also, as far as periods, um, so far I have been spotting. I haven't had an actual period since getting it, but I have been spotting more than I did when I first got my IUD. Since it's been the first, since it's only been about two months, it's pretty typical for that to happen. Um, in the next couple of months, it might lessen. And then I'd say a pro is that uh, so far there has been no effect in my skin or weight. It hasn't broken me out. I haven't gained a ton of weight. So I think that's huge when it comes to things like this, putting in your body and the way your body reacts is um, that it doesn't do that type of stuff. So that is a pro. So I'm going to talk about the cons of the arm implants. So I talked about the arm implant on Instagram and what really kind of started the conversation was that I had a lot of bruising, which I will talk about later, but like quick picture, like we'll talk about it later, but like that's bad. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and talk about cons of the arm implant. So first and foremost, mood swings. So before I got the arm implant, I asked pretty much anyone I knew that had it, just their own experience. And these are people that don't even know each other, friends from different parts of the country, um, you know, and for some reason, every single person I talked to said mood swings was a huge thing that happened to them. So I was like, it's probably going to happen to me then if it's happening to pretty much everyone that has it. And I didn't quite understand what they meant by mood swings because I'm not, I'm not super like extreme in my moods. And so I didn't know if it would affect me the same way or what exactly they meant, but now I know. So since getting the arm implant, it is hormonal and I don't know the exact science behind why this happens. I just know that hormones and imbalances occur and hormones are being released in amounts that I don't know and my body is reacting in ways that maybe it's just adjusting. But yeah, the mood swings are so real. So I'm gonna talk about my experience with this and I heard it gets a little bit better. In the beginning, your body is just really adjusting and because of that, the mood swings are a little bit more maybe extreme than they will be, I hope. Um, but for me, I just get moments where I am so, so sad out of completely nowhere and for no reason whatsoever and it's happened multiple times and it will happen maybe once or twice a month I feel like it might be around the time I my body would typically have a period um, if it had a regular period because it happens kind of the same week every month 
I'm trying to make sense of it. I don't know if that's what it is, but I will just get so sad and just cry and cry and cry. Just be so, so sad for absolutely no reason. And also um, a little bit more irritable in other times. Mostly sad though when I do have mood swings, but sometimes irritable and just kind of snap back a little bit more than I used to and just be really annoyed for no reason or upset for no reason whatsoever. And I explained this to my boyfriend before getting it because I knew that this was gonna happen. So he's been really understanding. But if you don't really understand what's happening, it can come off as like a little just overwhelming. So thank him and his patience. I love him so much for that. I mean, it's just like, I can't control it. So yeah, that's a thing. And I'm just hoping that, you know, with time it gets better. And it's just so frustrating in the moment because I'm talking about it now, but like when it's happening and you're like super sad for no reason, it's just like, stop crying. Like, why are you crying? Stop crying. And then you just cry more. And it's so frustrating because like, I, especially in a public place. And another con, like I mentioned before, was the bruising. This lasted uh, for about four weeks, almost a month, like three to four weeks after I had the um, implant inserted. So I bruise easily, like in general, like I am like a freaking plum. Is that like a peach? Uh, whatever fruit gets bruised easily. And I know that for some people, they didn't have this happen to them, but if you bruise easily, you're probably gonna end up bruising a lot from this. So yeah, here are some pictures. It looked like I got beat. Like I've never had a bruise that dark and that big. And um, yeah, I mean, like I mentioned before, like I don't have a really bad period, but it is definitely still a con that I am spotting a lot. Um, more than I did with the IUD at least and more than I have like in the past and um, it's been really like a regular spotting Hey guys, so I'm gonna hop on real quick literally just pulled up photo booth on my computer but It's been about three months since I filmed my last clip of this video and I wanted to do another update like I said kind of long term uh, because these these implants have side effects and I didn't want to, you know, say within the first two months what it was going to be because I didn't know what was going to happen after. So the last thing I said was I was spotting and I had mood swings. Three months later from that point, I've been, currently I have been with the next plan on for six months now and I want to get it out. I haven't done it, but the spotting has not stopped. I literally spot like every day, which on the ID I did not have a problem with. But with my prior history, overall, I used to have periods every day. So I feel like it's kind of like that again, but it's just not as heavy. But that's an issue I don't want and I solve with IUD. So that's one thing. Another thing is um, mood swings are still happening. That's not something that went away. And as I talk to more and more people, more and more people encourage me to get taken out because they wish they had, they endured you know, the entire duration, but it never got better. And they wish that they had taken it out sooner or that they had, would have taken it out, you know, at all. And um, so I'm not to say that it's going to be, you know, how it is for everyone. As with anything, everyone has a different experience. But um, that is kind of where I'm at right now. But I just really wanted it to um, reflect my experience. So Thank you so much for watching. It sucks to be a girl sometimes, but you know how it is. Um, it's nice to be informed of the decisions that we make. And with the climate, everything going on especially, um, I mean, we know our bodies more than anyone else does, and we should have the power to make that decision and an informed decision. And that's why I'm very open about talking about this stuff because it is something that we have to deal with and we should not be ashamed of. And... Um, yeah, I mean, I could go on and on about that, but I had to include that, and I hope that this video was helpful. And let me know what other videos you want to see me do. I love doing these types of videos because um, I feel like, as women, we should, you know, help each other out when it comes to these things. So, yeah. Anyways, love you guys so much. Thanks for watching. Hope you're having a wonderful day.